this video, we're going to take a look at what causes the one blink code on Panasonic Plasma TVs that were made in 2011. The most common problem is the bad main board, but it could also be a bad panel. We'll now have a graphic come up that shows what TV model numbers this video applies to. Just a reminder that if you have a question about your repair or your TV uh, problem, feel free to comment below this video. Uh, we appreciate when you subscribe and leave a comment with your question and we will respond as quickly as we can. Be sure to include your TV model number, the brand, and the symptoms that your TV is showing. That will help us to uh, best determine the fix for your TV repair and get the response back to you as quickly as possible. Just to go over a few boards here on the TV, over here we have the main board, also referred to as the A board. Here we have the SS board, also referred to as an X sustain or X main board on some TVs. Here we have the power supply board, which can also be referred to as the P board. Here we have the SC board, this can also be referred to as the Y sustain, Y sus, and Y main board for different brands. Here we have the buffers that connect to the SC board. These are also SU and SD boards and can be Y scan drives and different buffers for different brands as well. Now we will take a look at the one blink code and what that looks like. For the one blink code, there isn't too much diagnosing or troubleshooting. The problem is the A main board, which is right here on the TV. This board will need to be replaced in order to fix your TV. Now we will go ahead and show how to remove some of the cables on the board and get it replaced. Now this is just one A main board from a Panasonic Plasma in 2011. Yours may be a little bit different than this one, um, but this just kind of gives you an overview of what the board looks like and the cables and connections. Now to remove this board and replace it, you'll have to do a few different things that are kind of common with any board replacement, uh, but your board might have some additional uh, obstacles or screws. So along the side here, you might have this plastic piece that needs to be removed and you'll have to undo these side screws to get that out before you can actually remove the board from the TV. Now most boards are going to have cables just like this that run onto the board that you'll need to remove and then ribbon cables as well. For the ribbon cables just flip up the tabs and then slowly and gently remove the actual ribbon cable. Flip that up and then you can pull out the cables. These other connections can just be pinched and pulled from the actual board itself to remove it. After you've removed all the cables, then you'll want to remove the screws from the board. As you can see, there are screws holding the board to the chassis. After you've removed those screws, you can pull the board off of the chassis and then put your new board on there. You'd want to screw the new board onto the chassis and then reconnect all the cables back to the new board. Again, these are the following models that this video will work for. Please remember if you have a question to comment below the video in the comment section. Please include your TV model number the symptoms that your TV is showing, and any other details that you think will be necessary for us to identify a, repl a replacement part for you. Thank you for watching one of our many tutorials here at ShopJimmy.com. If you have any further questions regarding your repair, 
simply post a question in the comments section below or call our award-winning customer service team at the number on your screen. We strive to learn and share new TV repair tips every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and grow with us. Share our videos with your friends and help us spread the savings. And don't forget to hit that like button.